joy or happiness, success or failure, peace or dismay. The foundations of our life rest on the words we receive. A word of hope and guidance, translated from the Temple of Solomon in Brazil. You are listening to a word of faith with Bishop Macedo. In the name of Jesus Christ, my God, you know how important it is for us and for your servants to hear your voice and to learn from you, O Holy Spirit, and what it is that you want from us, and what it is that you are expecting from your servants. Because if you do not tell us or show us what is it you want from us, we are going to be lost. We are going to be lost and puzzled. So please, Lord, for Lord's sake, give us a direction. Open our understanding in a clear way and precisely so that no one, none of us, none of us may fall into the snare of evil or any kind of trap so that we may be attentive permanently listening and hearing your voice in Jesus name Amen thanks be to God you may have your seat very well I have a question and the question that I have is this why the devil or for whom or to whom does the devil prepare or set up traps to people of God, especially for God's servants? Why? Why and for what reason? What is his main goal? if he has billions of people that are already in his hand. What is the reason? Think for a second. Why the Apostle Peter wrote Satan, because your adversary, the devil, walks around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Who is he referring to? To the unbeliever? No, he is addressing to those who are of God. Therefore, you who are a person of God, then you should be aware and to be watchful so that you may not fall into the snare or into the trap that Satan prepares or set up. And this is very important, extremely important, so that you may understand God's greatness for you. So you must protect your salvation, you protect your soul, you want to save others, but you cannot, you cannot give up your salvation. Because what was the point of saving others and losing your, your soul or gaining the whole world? Gaining the whole world is not, is not making money, but it's to save others and lose your own. It doesn't make sense. So we have to preserve our salvation above all things. There is nothing more powerful, glorious, or more rich than our salvation. For people, or for the Christians, 
there are young in their faith or child, childish in their faith or those who do not have experience, they are still inexperienced or innocent. The devil has any kind of snare or traps. But for those who are the chosen of God and for those who are bringing the, world, the word to others, so the traps are not the same like another, especially those who are converted because whoever was called and chosen to serve God, to proclaim God's glory and to bring salvation, these, they are, they have to be aware and they are more tempted than others. And the greater is the position or the level that that servant occupies or have greater greater and more watchful he has to be because the trap for them is even more are you understanding what I'm saying for example the trap for you you pastor auxiliary it's one kind but the, the trap for a bishop is another. And for the bishop who is responsible for everyone, so the trap for him is even more, it's even more greater, it is well prepared than from the others. And why? Why is it prepared? Why is it more time? Because the one who is in charge, if you, if you hit the one, if you hit the head, then yes, many will fall with, with him. And why is that? And obviously, the greater the position that the servant carries, so then he is tempted. He is tempted the most. More traps, more traps and snares are planned for him. So then, our vigilance, we have to be more, to be watchful in double. Not because you are a pastor, or a bishop, or a pastor's wife, or a bishop's wife, or whoever, you, whoever it is you are, whatever position you may carry, you, you have more, you should be, be more secure than the members. But in fact, we have to have a, a, watch, a watching manner, we have to be watchful in, a, in double. And the reason why, and this is the point, why? Why? Of course, the devil wants our soul, that's, uh, that's the answer. But the reason is why? Why our soul? What else? does the devil want? What, what is his plan or his goal? Think for a second. In these last days of pandemic, for instance, like the lockdown, the church is closed. People are not able to come to church in certain places. There are places where the church can, they cannot enter the church whatsoever. So the light of that church is lit out. Why? Because the lockdown, they, they locked everything down. Although there are cases there that the church is open, but we are open, but there is more restrictions, 30%, 20%. But what's the devil's main objective in regards to the churches? is to close it down for good. It's the case we are facing there in Angola. The church over there, beautiful, nice, prepared, thousands of chairs, but empty. The church is closed. So the light in that place 
of that church is now lit out. So see the church as your own life. View the church as your own life. View the church as a bishop, pastor, assistant, a worker, an official, a servant of God who is dedicating, or dedicating their lives permanently just to save souls. They don't do nothing but save souls. Our life is to serve our Lord. I don't give, I don't give this up for nothing. I don't give it up for nothing because it is, let's say, the greatest glory or personal glory which is to serve God and to make others to serve Him as well. But then, what is Satan's objective? Is to turn off this light is to bring this light out of you. He wants you to no longer carry this light. He wants you to be one more, one more who is lit out. The unbelievers, the unbelievers, they are lit out. And there are two kinds of people. Those who are in light, because they are light, and those who are in darkness. And Jesus speaks of this. Jesus talks about this in John, John 12, 43, and he, read, he reads like this. It says clearly, For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. 12, 43 of the book of John. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. And this is referring to those who are darkness. Those who are in darkness. And then he brings this word. For they loved the praise of men, the praise of this world, the praise of money, easy life, they love the way of being, the way of men. So, they loved the praise of men than the praise of God. So, Jesus is speaking here or saying that we, that we are God's glory in this world. We carry God's glory in this world. God's glory. We don't see God's glory physically. You don't see it in me and I don't see it in you because it is spiritual. But Satan knows and sees. Satan, he sees those who are of God and those who are not. Those who are of God, they carry this, they shine this light. And this light is the Holy Spirit. This glory is the Holy Spirit. When a person receives the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they become and they are now God's dwelling place, where God's glory shall dwell. You can find several verses in the Old Testament as in the New Testament that speaks of God's glory, that refers to us. Just an example, On, in Psalm, Psalm 19, Psalm 19 reads, Psalm 19 reads like this, look at what it says, the heavens declare the glory of God. So when you look up to the heavens, to the sky, you see God's glory. You see the sky with the stars shining. You look at, you see the moon during the night or the sun during the day, the stars. 
and you and you become everyone the unbelievers or those who believe they are marveled before God's great work which are the heavens the heavens declare the glory of God so think a little bit with me we we are the glory of God in this world you you are the glory of God in this world and it does not matter the grade of education it doesn't matter your race your color it does not matter what you have done or what you or what you have not done once the Holy Spirit is in you you become God's glory in this world and what the devil wants why does he set up traps just to lead out and turn off this glory to remove this glory because he sees it with anger and with envy the devil wants to erase God's glory in us that's why he brings about the snares the traps and the only person that can decide to keep the glories the gl God's glory it's your own will your free will of course you who have the Holy Spirit you are not crazy to want to lose this glory so you're going to keep it you are going to protect you are going to you know do whatever it takes so that you may not lose God's glory because once you lose God's glory you become like everybody else or even worse or even worse than the others who are unbelievers are you getting this are you understanding so look at how and why Peter he said be sober and watchful because your adversary the devil he is walking around like a roaring lion to erase or to destroy God's glory in you the angels they they wished they desired to be God's glory in this world but they cannot and they are not only we are able to only you and those who believe in the Lord Jesus can be God's glory so when we preach the gospel and a person rejects when they reject the gospel because the gospel is God's glory is the Lord Jesus it is the word of Jesus that came to bring life it is God's glory so when we preach the gospel and people reject the gospel Jesus said that they loved more the praise of man than the praise of God we are the living gospel like Paul says you are my living letters my walking letters because we are spreading the gospel of the Lord Jesus we are alive not only on what we preach but what we are our life and what we are living so the glory of God in this world is through us so when a person rejects the Word of God they are rejecting God's glory that you are offering them because if a person does not accept no I don't want I prefer to continue in this world I prefer to continue living my way I, I prefer to remain you know remain as I am I prefer to be the owner of my own life I do not want to be God's glory in this world 
and have nothing. I want to have things. I want to have what the world offers. And then these, they are denying. They are denying to be God's glory, which is to have the Holy Spirit. So when a person receives the Holy Spirit, you do not receive the, the Holy Spirit to speak in tongues. You don't receive the Holy Spirit to make miracles. You don't receive, we don't receive the Holy Spirit for us to tell other people, look, I have now the Holy Spirit. No, we have received the Holy Spirit so that we can be in this world as long as we are in this world, God's glory. And this is great. This is powerful. And that's why, that's why it is worth for each one of us to be permanently watchful and praying. Jesus said, watch and pray. You see that the prayer is extremely important, but to watch is, mu is a must. For you need to be alert to any kind, for any kind of actions that the world brings about. You have to be alert. You have to be on, an, on alert for any trap that the devil may bring to you, may offer you. So the devil uses traps, snares, he brings about a good word, a convincing word, and it comes from a good person, a person that may seem spiritual. Who spoke to King David, for instance, to stay and remain in the palace and not to go into war? Who was the one who approached David to say that? Someone came to David and said, it's not good for the king to go to war, stay remain in the palace because we are risking our lives for you, O king. If I die, if a soldier of yours die, no difference will make. But if a king dies, that's going to be a hit in the nation. And David, he listened to that word and remained in, in the palace. The Bible says that in the palace, in the afternoon, he would walk, he would walk in the garden, in the garden palace. And it was in one particular time that he saw he wanted a woman and he got this woman to be with him. He found Bathsheba and saw her naked taking her bath, and you know the story. And until today, Israel is paying the price. Till today, Israel, Israel got the land that God promised. But until today, Israel is paying the price for that action that David committed. David was restored. He was saved, yes. He found grace and repent, yes, he confessed immediately when the prophet Nathan spoke about it, but yet he paid the price, a high price for what he did. He paid a high price because of that action and it was only one, one direction. It was a trap of the devil. It was a trap for the devil. And, that, and David was God's glory. David was a man after God's own heart. But now the light, the power of Israel was now removed because of that action. That the glory of God was lit out even though after receiving forgiveness, there was problems down the line throughout the history of Israel. Solomon had the same problem. Ask me anything you want. I want wisdom to lead your people in righteousness of what is right. 
And Solomon was answered. And God answered, because you asked for wisdom to rule, I will give you more, more than what other men can have. And God gave him the conditions with all the glory of this world. He had gold, wisdom, riches, left and right, women. He, God gave him everything that he desired. And he was so, so full of riches. He was so rich with the glory of this world that he ended up and ended up involving, getting involved with other women that brought other directions to his life. So Solomon ended up going into the same path of idolatry, into the trap of idolatry. So Solomon fell into the trap of idolatry. And then after, after the idolatry, he got lost. And right at the end of his life, in an old age, and you can read there in Ecclesiastes, that he speaks of it. How he says in a poetic, in a poetic manner, but it shows that he was a man who failed. What is the point of having all the riches and build this and have that? And He has done so many things. And in the end, he did all that to leave it behind for others and to leave this world. So he also fell into a trap and lost God's glory in his life. He lost God's glory. He stopped being God's glory. His son also became a king and the kingdom of Israel was divided. When Jesus came to Israel, he found that the kingdom of Israel, God's glory was no more, was no more in the people. And Jesus tells this to the Jews that they loved the praises of man than the praise of God. Now you can understand better. Now you can perceive with clarity when the prophet Haggai, he said that the glory of the first house will be greater. The glory of the first, God came upon it. God came upon the, the temple of Solomon, which was the first house built. And that was magnificent. But now, the glory of the second house comes upon those who receive Jesus as their only Lord and Savior and they receive the Holy Spirit. And these, they carry God's glory. You must carry God's glory. You see that our position as a pastor or servants of God, our responsibility is greater than of the members. Yes or no? So when a pastor gets involved with any kind, any kind of situation or falls into the traps of the devil, like to make money, to buy this, or having vanity, to have a, a luxurious life, or I am a Christian but I am not a fool, I am a Christian but I am smart, I am a Christian and I am not like these ones who who lag around. No, I have to find way, I have to make my way. These are losing and are falling. But those who remain, who remain in faith, they remain with dignity and holiness. They keep in the holiness with God, like Jesus he, he said in the, in the prayer, in the Lord's prayer, 
he says our father referring to our eternal father our father who is in heaven hallowed be your name meaning holy means separated from every everyone else to be holy is to be separate holy is separate the word holy means separate to God so hallowed be your name means exactly this I I have to be separate I have to sanctify Jesus in my life in my way of being in my way of thinking in my way of speaking in my way of leading in my way of being day after day just as you have to do all of us we have to do that each one of us we must do this to sanctify God's name in our life but Bishop tell me this but pastor so-and-so the member the wife we have we have nothing to do with what other people do if they are doing wrong and they are making themselves unholy if they are doing wrong it's their problem I'm not a judge to say to say so and so you have sinned you live wrong no I cannot do that of course in the universal church we have we have discipline in the universal church we also have harmony we have peace we must keep our conduct I, you in your church so then the pastor who is under your responsibility if he makes a mistake you have to communicate you have to let us know because you are being zealous you are having zeal to the work of God but you cannot be on top and with a magnifying glass to see if he made a mistake or not it is his life God's glory is in him or not if God's glory is in him amen and it's what we expect if our behavior if your behavior if our behavior together in general reflects God's glory truly so then we don't need to be worried with what others say or do not say because our life is clean our conscience is clean and we are sanctifying the name of the Lord Jesus when they look at me and say this is a man of God that is a woman of God I see a person who is righteous I see a person who is righteous a person who does what is right it's a person of faith so all this is involved with the sanctification of God's name in our life our permanent behavior so look at the responsibility it is glorious for you to be a glory of God in this world because his glory is untouchable it's untouchable you see you see in the evening you look at the stars in the sky and you see it perfect no no mistake and that's how we are more than the heavens and the earth more than the seas we we must show and to manifest God's glory 24 7 in our life are you understanding the devil he wants to erase God's glory from us his main objective is to turn it off to erase the devil's main objective is to turn off the lamps 
and to leave the tabernacle of God in darkness. God, the devil's objective is to make God's servant, to make God's glory, to make God's servant to turn their back to the Most High and begin to seek their own glory. Jesus said, no one can serve two masters, or you will serve God, or you will serve Mammon. You, there is no two lords, it's either God or the God of hell. See then how the soul, how there is a moral imposition upon each one of us in order for us to maintain God's glory in this world. Is it clear? So, it is always important for us to examine ourselves and that's why we do the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper, before we, we take the Lord's Supper, we need to examine ourselves. That's what Paul said, examine, examine now yourselves because you, you are taking part, you are taking part of sacrifice of the Lord Jesus. You sacrifice your life for the sacrifice of Jesus in order to have the glory of God, just like He sacrificed His life so that we could be the glory of His Father here on earth. That's why we have God's glory. You can search about God's glory in the Bible and read each verse and you will see a series of verses that speaks and talks about the glory of God. Paul teaches about it so that you can truly remain and have your light, your light lit up, which is glorious God which is God's glory and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God's glory in us. The Holy Spirit is God's glory in us, in me and in you. So it doesn't matter if your ministry has only 15 people. No, it's your, I was placed here and God gave me 15 people to take care. So then the glory of God must exhale with Jesus' perfume so that 15 more people can become God's glory. All right? So it doesn't matter what it, whatever it is that you're doing, you are pleasing God and He sees your sacrifice, your battle. You are not searching and seeking and having desires and wishes to have a church with thousands, ten thousand of people. You must seek and search for God's glory in people's lives. Whether they are few or many, doesn't matter. If God sees that you can have much, you will be put on much. If he sees that you need to have little, he will put you in little. It's just like the, the servants who received five, the other who received two, and the other one who received one. And the one who received only one talent, he hid. And what did he hide? God's glory. And because of that, he was thrown into outer darkness, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, in Angola right now, there is, the phys there is no physical church right now. The universal church, the physical universal church, it doesn't exist over there, for now. And it's only right now the people who belong to it, people who are being persecuted, people who are suffering because of Jesus for Jesus' cause, 
But I have received news that many people are being baptized with the Holy Spirit through this. Among this pandemic that's going on over there, this injustice that's going on, and yet many are those who are being born of God for God's glory. This is wonderful. It is glorious. God's glory within you. Now imagine. Let us do something right now. Let us, let us see if this that we are saying is true. Right now, you're going to close your eyes. You're going to close your eyes. Please stand and close your eyes. And now imagine yourself in, go in God's glory. Don't think about husband, your wife, children, your relatives, parents, in church, no one. Just think right now about you being God's glory, being the glory of God in this world. And the Holy Spirit will confirm right now the glory of God, the glory of the Most High in your life. Hallelujah. For you to be God's glory, I always thought that I had no value. I always thought that people would look at me with disdain because I am black or because I can't walk or because I'm ugly or I'm too small or because I am chubby or because I am old. I don't do anything right, but I am God's glory. I am God's glory. You are God's glory there where you are. So receive. Receive this revelation from the Most High. Receive the revelation of God's glory within you right now. Right now. Wherever you are, whether you are in an ugly place, a small church, a lonely place, maybe right now you hear Bishop's voice and you never met Bishop before. You don't know who I am, but you know what? That doesn't matter because where, where you are, even though I may not know you, but you are God's glory where you are, whether in the forest, whether in the riverside, whether it's among the Indians, among the Africans, among the Europeans or Americans, doesn't matter the race or race or culture, wherever you are, you are God's glory. Hallelujah. You are God's glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my Heavenly Father, I remember that in order to maintain this glory since the day you have called me, since the day you chose me, I have suffered. I suffered persecutions, injustice, and no one, no one thought I had conditions. But I was and I am your glory. 
and all I wanted was to take the glory, this glory to people. Oh, my Father, right now, your glory has multiplied throughout all the universal church of the kingdom of God. Here are your servants. Here are the talents that we have multiplied. So come and be glorified through them, O oh Father. Come and be exalted and magnified and that each one be this glory, the glory, the living glory for so many who are suffering throughout this world. So receive the Spirit of the Most High. Receive right now. You can talk to God now. Speak in tongues, in your own language. Feel free and speak to God right now where you are because you are His glory. Blessed be your eternal glory, O Father, our living God. Hallelujah, O my Father. So come with your glory right now upon your servants and strengthen, strengthen the hands of those who are weak, the feet of those who are collapsing and raise those who are falling and give, my Lord, cheer, lift them up, those who are feeling down and multiply your talents in their lives and may your name be glorified in their lives. Oh, Holy Spirit, we worship you, we adore you because you have revealed us the glory of the gospel, the glory of your word, the glory of your holy name, the glory of your Son. Hallelujah. Come, my Father, and be exalted, glorified and magnified above those who love you. We love you, my Jesus. And that is why your glory remains in us from this moment on and forever. Amen. And thanks be to God. God bless all of you in Jesus' name. May you be God's glory. Amen. Think about it. Meditate on this. Enjoy this. And when you are tempted, remember that the devil wants to remove you. He wants to remove this glory. He wants to erase God's glory from you. He wants to erase God's glory in your life. But God is great and He will not allow this to happen. In Jesus' name, Amen.